Thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And on today's show, I'm going to be discussing a little bit of our old friend Bryce Harper. Because honestly, this conversation got started between me and a friend offline. And we were kind of discussing because I'm not the biggest fan of Bryce Harper. I'm just going to put it straight to, straight to the point. But he he loves Bryce Harper. And we've been kind of going back and forth on this as to why Nationals fans really don't like Bryce Harper. And I've got a couple answers for that, but I can also play a devil's advocate as well. Also, there's news on the MLB lottery draft and when that will be and when we'll find out when the Nationals pick in the 2023 MLB draft. Also, there was an interesting piece today regarding the Nationals free agency that might make you a little bit happy. We're going to get into all of that and more right after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And again, thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day. It is always much appreciated. And give me a follow at Ryan Clary 11 over on Twitter. And you can also follow the show page at LO underscore Nationals over on Twitter as well. And so let's just get right into this discussion because this is something that's really been itching for me especially. And it's still a hot topic. Bryce Harper obviously left us after the 2018 season, but... When you put it that way, it really kind of makes it seem like he chose to leave here. And let's just get the facts straight. Professional athletes, they want to get their money now, and as they should. If you're a professional athlete, if you're a profession, if you're a professional in any aspect, in any sport or any job or any field, you deserve to get however much money you want. And it is your right to pick where you want to go to earn that money. It's your right to step up and say, hey, I'm worth this dollar amount compared to this. And a lot of people get upset about it and say, especially with professional athletes, and they're like, well, why don't you do a a team-friendly deal like Jose Ramirez with the Guardians last year? Why why don't people do team-friendly deals? What's the difference between $200 million and $230 million? Well, there's a difference. Think about it. Think about what $30 million could do for you and your family. And so just think about that. Would you take $30 million right off the bat? And this is just an example. Would you? I would. And ask yourself why. Well, because that's generational wealth. Just that $30 million right there. Well, there you go. Yes, $200 million is also generational wealth, but guess what's also even more generational wealth that'll help out your kids, 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 kids? That $230 million. And so that's why I always hate that discussion of people saying, well, people should be able to take more team-friendly deals. Uh-uh. That's not how it works. And let's be honest. I think it's a kind of a tired-out argument to where fans like myself who have said that before and I have wished that Players do take team-friendly deals. But then again, I get the aspect of it, and I'm not going to openly complain about. Would it be nice to have a like the Atlanta Braves, who seem to all all they do is take team-friendly deals? Of course it would. That's amazing. But guess what? It's not realistic. That's not going to happen. And so back when Bryce Harper, when we offered him that deal for – somewhere around 250 million with a bunch of deferred money. It was pretty obvious that he wasn't going to be taking that because Bryce Harper and what he was worth at that time, he was going to be the highest paid player in the history of baseball. And let's even go further in that season, 2018, him and Machado were kind of at, they were both stalling because those were the two marquee free agents and Harper had to wait until Machado got paid so he can base his contract off that and say, because think about it at that time, Harper was the more valuable player and he was the better player. And that still stands today. And again, 
he had to wait and he had to be patient. That's why that whole process got drawn out for however long it was. And think about it. It's just a tough situation to sit here as a fan or even as anyone who just roots for the team or covers for the team and says, well, Bryce, you should have taken the initial offer that you said you wanted to stay here. You had all the marbles in your basket to stay here and stay put in Washington, D.C. And yes, I agree with that. Harper, he said it time and time again. Even after he signed with the Phillies, he was on with the Jared Carabas show. I'm not going to plug it. No free shout outs. But he was on with him in 2020, I believe, during the COVID shortened season. And he said he wanted to stay with the Washington Nationals. He wanted to be here. This was his home at that point. Obviously, with Las Vegas, that's where he's from. And that's really where his roots are. But he made himself at home. As a 19-year-old here in Washington, D.C., he grew up. And he grew up in front of all of us. He grew up with a ton of people, too. As a fan, I, I, I when he came in, I was 13 years old. So I feel like I really grew up with Bryce Harper. And by the time he left, I was already out of high school and college. And so I did a lot of growth myself with them. That's why it stung so much to see Bryce Harper leave. And really, when you look at it in context, looking back at it, I don't have the exact offer of what we offered. But if you remember, Bryce Harper was going to take the initial offer that the learners gave him. Yes, he was holding out more money, but this is the place where he wanted to be. This is the place to where, like I said, he called it home. He could see himself living here, having children here. He, that's what he was thinking of. And so it, it's tough to sit here and just bash the guy, even though there is some bashing to be made for him. But then again, I also have to see the other side of it. And I do respect his decision to go take more money and play with the Philadelphia Phillies. But my issue with all of this is, it's not the fact that he came down after he was kicking around free agency and then wanted the offer the learners initially offered him, which then again, the learners said no to that offer after they signed Patrick Corbin. They moved on. They gave all the diver, the defer, deferred money to Patrick Corbin, which you know they love doing. That's their thing. That's their bit. If they're going to get deferred money in the deal, sign yourself up. They'll sign me, you, and Joe Schmo down the street for deferred money. That's the learner's deal. That's what they do. And you know that now as Nationals fans. You know it. Max Scherzer, deferred money. Like I said, Patrick Corbin, deferred money. Steven Strasburg, deferred money. Anthony Rendon's contract offer, deferred money. Bryce Harper, deferred money. All That's what they do. That's their business strategy for it. And I'm not going to get into that. There's not enough time to get into that today. But that's their deal. That's what they do. So I can't blame them for trying to step out of their own lane. That just wasn't going to be their thing. But back to the point, to what my issue was with Bryce Harper leaving. And it was joining the Philadelphia Phillies for me. I don't know what offer stood right there on the table, and I believe in what he and his agent, Scott Boris, said, that they, they're going to take the best deal possible. And I think they did. They took the most money with the Philadelphia Phillies, and he ran with it. And I can't blame the guy for it. And you shouldn't either. But like I said, what I blame him for is choosing that team up north in those stupid pinstripes that they should be ashamed of wearing, the Philadelphia Phillies. You chose that team, the team that cheered when your buddy, your mentor, Jason Worth, broke his wrist. And I saw the other day, Jason Worth was throwing out the first pitch over in one of the World Series games. He was there being honored, and they seemed to applause him then. That stuck with me. Like I've said on many times before on this platform, if you were a kid and you grew up going to Nationals Park from 2009 through 2012, you know the pain of what it was like sitting next to a drunk Phillies fan. There was nothing, and I mean nothing worse, 
And I really want to get more into this about the Philadelphia Phillies because that's what I have the issue with more than anything. But before I do that, I want to tell you about my friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all on BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Let me tell you a little bit about my game plan with bet online. What I do is I love numbers. I love to see the stats on their plays. And what I do, I just look it up, man. I look up betonline.net and they have all those stats for me right then and there. It's that easy. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix in. Head to the website today to use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. And so as I was plugging why I don't like Bryce Harper for choosing the Philadelphia Phillies. And it's that simple for me. You chose one of our bitter rivals. And that's at that point when he left in 2018. We don't, we don't really have too many rivals. It's all within the division. But the Philadelphia Phillies were one of them. Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia, they have a thing. All the sports teams are in the same division. All of them. And let's be honest, Philly sports and D.C. sports are pretty comparable <laughs> with their success over the last 20 years. Have they had more than us? Mm, maybe. Have they had less? Probably not. We're kind of the same. A lot of the same franchises that have been stuck in purgatory forever. A lot of the same players and same teams to where you have a lot of hope. And you're told to trust the process, but do we really trust the process? Do we really do? The commanders stink. The Eagles have been good over the last decade. The Philadelphia Phillies have stunk over the last decade. The Nats have been great, except for recent. So on and so forth. The Sixers have been mediocre up until the last five years. And the Wizards, well, they're the Wizards. The Capitals, thank God they have Alex Ovechkin. But Philly is kind of just that annoying younger brother that's going to yell at you when he's drunk. He's going to do all the things that you were told not to do, and that's what Philadelphia is. The fact that he chose Philadelphia and sat up there like he loved Philadelphia. Bryce, let's be honest. Like the stuff that he says about Philly is really just what irks me to the core. And why is that? Well, he's like, oh, it's a blue-collared city. Like, these people reflect me. I'm sorry, but what city isn't a blue-collared city? Or what is a blue-collared city, in matter of fact? Because, well, you say about D.C., well, it's a, it's a federal government city. All people care about here is politics. Sure, but that's just a stereotype. I could say the same about Philly with banks. All they do is, like, finance and banking. But now it's a blue-collared city. I think every city is a blue-collared city. I just think the fact that Bryce Harper, let's be honest, he loves himself some Bryce Harper. We know that about Bryce. You know who else loves themselves? Philadelphia. They love their city. They love their cheesesteaks. And they love their Phillies. I got to give them credit. The fans show up. But when they stink, they're going to let you know. Ask Reese Hoskins that in the World Series. They let him know. They let them all know. And so that that's what really just irked me about this whole thing is all the mouthpiece stuff that he says about Philadelphia. I think that's just a bunch of you-know-what. It's a bunch of crap. And it's honestly, quite frankly, just annoying. In, in this whole episode today, why would people say, well, what's the point of talking about Bryce Harper today? Well, he just lost to the Philadelphia, or the Philadelphia Phillies. He just lost to the Houston Astros in six games. And also, this kind of brought this something up because this whole episode today, or at least the first 20 minutes of this, is all inspired by one of my friends. 
and the real reason why it got down to my core and why this bothered me so much, but this whole discussion was interesting because it really made me think. Who was the better national, Juan Soto or Bryce Harper? And take a guess what he said. He said Bryce Harper. And that is where I draw the line. There is no chance Bryce Harper was the better Washington national than Juan Soto. First, let me tell you this. The numbers. The numbers aren't even close in my mind. Not even close. Don't even compare. In fact, I have those up here now. From So here, here's Juan Soto's first 617 games. And if you're wondering for plate appearances, it's his first 2,667 plate appearances. And this also mixes in with the San Diego Padres, which, by the way, his numbers were down across the board with him. So they were not picking these up by any stretch of the imagination. Juan Soto batted 287 with us, a 424 OBP, a 526 slugging percentage. I was good for a 950 on base plus slugging. And this wasn't just with us. Again, this was through his first 2,667 plate appearances in the major leagues. Bryce Harper, his first 2,770 plate appearances was 657 games, all with the Washington Nationals. Here were heard his numbers. 120 home runs, 334 RBIs, a 279 batting average, a 382 on base percentage, and a 500 slugging percentage that was good for an 883 OPS. And we're also blanking on the fact that Bryce Harper's MVP season in 2015 was in that. And that was an exciting season, but people tend to forget. That exciting season didn't translate to wins. And honestly, there was a lot more messiness than fun in that season. If you remember the infamous Jonathan Papelbon, Bryce Harper moment to where Papelbon is literally strangling him in the dugout while the game is happening. And that Matt Williams, our manager, who everyone who won manager of the year in 2014. But that 2015 season, it fell apart completely fell apart and the Matt Williams era ended just like that in the face of it was if you're watching on YouTube you'll see this Palpabon getting <clears throat> choked or not Pap- Bryce Harper getting choked how did I mess that up how that's what you remember it as like the 2015 season when someone says the 2015 Washington Nationals I think of Bryce Harper and the insane season that he had. But then again, I think of the complete debacle and how that clubhouse and locker room was split apart and we were not winning. Matt Williams wanted nothing to do with us. And quite frankly, the players wanted nothing to do with him. And it was very evident as him and Bryce Harper, the face of the organization at that point, butted heads at every crossroad, every single one. And so 2015 is a tough memory from wherever you look at it. It truly is. And I can't get enough of that because a lot of people just like to forget that. And I'm not one of those. I remember the tough times. I remember the bumpy roads that get us to that beautiful place, Davy Martinez style. So thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today. Available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So to wrap up everything, do I blame Bryce Harper for leaving the Nationals? I don't. But what I do is I blame him for joining those stupid red pinstripes in Philadelphia, the Phillies. That's what I blame him for. You chose the Dallas Cowboys instead of staying with the Commanders. You chose the Red Sox instead of staying with the Yankees. See what I mean? You don't cross those streams. And if you do, 
you're liable to being, I'm not even going to say hate. I know there's people out there who hate you. I think that's a strong word. I dislike you from that, and I will not root for you because of that. Kyle Schorber, we traded him. It's a different story. That's why I don't root against him. But will I root for him with the Phillies? Absolutely not. But now I want to get into another, not a bombshell, but someone I respect tremendously across baseball and covering baseball. And she is one of the brightest minds in really baseball media in general. I, I've gotten to talk to her a lot and I trust in her reporting. And this wasn't really a report, more so of an opinion. But she said that the Nationals could be saying, and this is from Britt Jolie from The Athletic, covers the MLB. She said that the Nationals could be kicking the tires on some big free agents. And the reason why that is, is because of new ownership. Now, here's the thing about this. Here's the wrinkle. New ownership's not in place now. And I have the direct quote up here now. New ownership wants to win now, so the Nats pursue several big free agents. And this was an opinion. This was not a report. This is not her going on the record saying that they will do this. It's just a bold prediction. It's just one. So don't misquote this. But it got me thinking, because Britt Drolley is someone who's in the D.C. area. She's got a lot of connections. You've read her work before. She's been around the baseball area here in Baltimore and D.C. You know her work and you trust her. And I do. And so is this someone in her ear saying, hey, keep an eye out for the Washington Nationals to make a little splash move? And then, ooh, ooh. Because yesterday I was just talking about Josh Bell and the possibility of us re-signing him this offseason. Like I said, only worth around $18.5 million maybe a little more for a bad team. You might have to pay that tax and get it up to 19 and a half million, maybe even 20 million. And I say, do it. It's never, even when you're rebuilding, it's never really a bad thing to spend on these guys, because guess what? If he sucks, then eh, that's not good. And that's not what you want. But then again, it's not the end of the world. You can move off these deals in 2023 and beyond. But if they are good, then there's two different paths you can go with this. One, he's just part of the foundation for what you're building for the next postseason team. Or two, you trade them at the deadline in 23 or 24 or however many years you give them. And you trade them and you get those assets back in return like we did in the 2022 deadline as well as 21. And that's the avenue you need to take. And the more I think about it is the more it kind of makes sense because – with new ownership in town, now no one will say that it's set in stone yet because it's not. But all signs are pointing towards Ted Leonsis owning the Washington Nationals alongside David Rubenstein. And when they do that, and of course they're going to want to make a splash. Because they're not dumb. They know what it is here in D.C. They know what the fans complain about. And the fans complain about the learners not spending money. What did the learners do when they first got to town in D.C.? They spent on Jason Worth. And so this would not surprise me at all if the ownership, the potential new ownership, is getting in the learner's ear and say, hey, let's spend a little cash for us because you guys are going to be got out of here most likely in the next few months or we're going to be partnering with you. And we want to spend some cash. We want to show the fans that we're serious about this and we're serious about putting a winning product out in the field. So it really just wouldn't surprise me, and it kind of goes more into the, my point about Josh Bell. It's kind of easy to splash some cash on Josh Bell, someone you already know. You know the production is there. You know he wants to be here, and he likes this area in D.C. He has a home here. I don't, I don't know if he does anymore. This is a place where he wants to be. And I think if you have that opportunity to sign someone like that, or who knows, maybe a Trey Turner if you go silly with the cash, which I just don't see happening with Trey. I would love that. That's my number one free agent right now. But will they do that? I don't know. It's kind of a tough one to tell. But getting that out there 
just makes me excited. It does. Because one, it kind of gives you a little bit of clarity into what the Nationals could be doing. And it gives you a little bit of hope moving forward. And that's just kind of what we need right now. We need something to grasp onto and say, please give me something to watch for in 23. And Josh Bell would certainly be a part of that, or really whoever they sign. Because there's a lot of big names out there in free agency. Also, another thing I wanted to get into, because like I said, there has been a lot going on with baseball. And with that a lot going on, is that they have officially announced when the draft lottery will be. The draft lottery will be set for December 6th here, they're not here, on MLB Network at the winter meetings in San Diego. It'll be 8.30 o'clock, and obviously the Nationals are tied for the best odds to land the number one overall pick, I believe, with the Athletics, as long as the Tigers, I believe, too, as well. I can fact check for you as we get closer to that moment. But we got a date on it, December 6th at 8.30 p.m. on MLB Network, and I'm sure I'll have something on that day as well. Maybe you can do a little live stream. Let me know what you want to do, and we can see where the Nationals pick because there are some big names in this MLB draft. And once that news comes out, I'm going to be going all in, especially if we land that number one overall pick. Ooh, do a little research about these guys because I can tell you this, I'm going to be coming hot and heavy on the 2023 MLB draft. There is nothing more that I like than a nice little rebuild with draft talk. So thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day plus instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Thank you guys again. It's always much appreciated. Enjoy the day. You deserve it. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm going to talk to you again on Wednesday. Have a good one.